All right, good afternoon, everyone. I hope all of you are well and safe at home. My name is Lexi Schultz. I am your host for this afternoon. I'm beyond excited to welcome you to the program launch of PHX Tokyo 2020-2021, bringing the future of Philippine fashion to Japan's fashion market. Style enthusiasts know that Tokyo is one of Asia's fashion meccas, a dynamic and diverse melting pot of cultures, influences, and personalities that make one of the most vibrant fashion capitals of the world. It is definitely exciting for us to feature our homegrown talents and Philippine design in this upbeat urban center. To tell us more about PHX Tokyo, it is my distinct honor to introduce the Executive Director of the Center of International Trade Expositions and Missions, Ms. Pauline Suaco Juan. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the program launch of PHX Tokyo 2020-2021. I would like to begin by welcoming our esteemed uh, DTI Undersecretary, uh, Abdul Ghani Makatoman, the PHX Fashion Conference led by Esme Palaganas and Tricky Lopa, our Philippine Trade Training Center Deputy Executive Director, Nelly Nita Dilera, and Fashion and Design Council of the Philippines, our fashion consultants and participants, and all the young fashion designers and students tuning in. On behalf of SITEM, I am proud to announce that we are launching PHX Tokyo 2020-2021, a showroom incubation program that aims to help young and emerging Filipino designers introduce their brands to Japan's dynamic and thriving fashion market. This program will run from October 2020 to July 2021. For starters, allow me to share with you a bit of a background of how the concept for PHX Tokyo was developed. Back in November 2019, the Fashion and Design Council of the Philippines, or FDCP, in partnership with the DTI Philippine Trade Training Center, or PTTC, organized the, uh, the PHX Fashion Conference event. This endeavor aimed to connect emerging local designers with international industry professionals to discuss market opportunities overseas, with a focus on Japan through a series of workshops, talks, and portfolio reviews. Since then, the conference has been integral in gathering and advancing the local fashion community. Following the positive turnout of the event and to help sustain the interest of foreign experts in the Philippines' homegrown talent, SITEM developed PHX Tokyo an integrated program that includes a tailor-made incubation and mentoring system, which will culminate in a showroom group exhibition in Tokyo, Japan. Along with Manila Fame's digital shift to Fame Plus, so has the PHX Tokyo program transitioned its implementation online. Instead of our participating designers physically flying in and out, Mentoring sessions will now be conducted online and will also be available to other designers eager to learn about Japan's fashion market. So while um, the team is uh, doing their online mar uh, consultation, uh, the sessions will be open to all uh, those who would like to listen in on the sessions. So to ensure the success of this program, SITEM continues to work with fashion consultants H3O and Teta Ortiz Matera to mentor, guide, and equip a talented, innovative, and diverse group of young Filipino designers. These designers were handpicked to join the program, which will officially run today until the three-day uh, of group uh, until the three-day group exhibition showroom happening in Tokyo, Japan, in July 2021. Through PHX Tokyo, we at SITEM hope to successfully launch our homegrown labels in Japan. And we hope maybe in the not too distant future, we may be able to launch a PHX Milan or PHX Paris program perhaps. So to all our participating designers, we wish you all the best. We are thrilled to see you grow and succeed through this brand new initiative from SITEM. And again, thank you so much to everyone for joining us this afternoon. On that note, 
it is my distinct honor to introduce our esteemed Undersecretary Abdul Ghani Makatoman to share with us his short message for PHX Tokyo. Thank you and mabuhay. Thank you, A.D. Pauline. A very good afternoon to everyone. First of all, I would like to congratulate the site team for organizing this new and highly promising initiative. Once again, site team has shown its uh, leadership in innovation, adaptability, and creativity. To our young designers, welcome. We are all excited about your journey and we will be hoping for the best. You are the pride of our country as you represent the Philippine creativity in the dynamic and adverse Japanese market. We will be able to, uh, we will all be watching as you, we see you reach the new heights on the international fashion stage. Fashion has always been an important sector for us in trade. It has brought numerous recognition to the Philippines as a country of creative uh, and talented individuals, while also providing decent jobs and livelihood across the regions. At the same time, it has contributed to the progress of uh, several industries, such as tourism, retail, and manufacturing. Over the past decades, the Philippine fashion industry is slowly, but surely making its way up on the global fashion market as more and more Filipino brands are recognized through international exhibits and boutiques. Given this momentum, we at the Department of Trade and Industry have big plans for the fashion sector. Just last year, we launched an industry roadmap for garments and textile from 2020 to 2029. And we aim to augment our collection of clothing and apparel goods from Filipino designers and manufacturers with a long-term goal of making the Philippines a go-to-sourcing destination for the world-class brands. Part of our strategy towards this vision is to develop emerging Filipino design talents like you and assist you in making your way on the global scene. The start of today's program is a step towards this direction. We hope that this series of mentoring sessions and workshops will give you new ideas and insight on how you can innovate and get the attention of the Japanese market. We are looking towards to a new and exciting pieces, and we hope that you will continue to promote Philippine design and culture as you go further in the global fashion market. Thank you, and mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you very much for those inspiring words, Edie Pauline, and of course, Yusek Makatoman. Truly, we will be looking forward to our young designers' success as they represent and champion Philippine artistry in Tokyo. Now, for us to learn more about how PHX Tokyo started, let's all please watch this video. A year and a half ago, a group of young fashion designers came to me with an idea, more like a dream on how they could get together and exchange ideas on how their brands could crack the global market. For its first edition in November 2019, PHX Fashion Conference focused on Japan and how fashion businesses in the Philippines can break through this abundant market. The PHX Fashion Conference, the first of its kind in the Philippines, it will bring together resource speakers and lecturers from both the creative and the business ends of the fashion industry to discuss overseas market opportunities and best practices in a regional and global level. So the purpose of the workshop is to educate, inform, and prepare the young designers for the very difficult market sector. 
think it's about time that you know that we have this conference in Manila that we really push the Filipino designer to think beyond the Philippine market. Somehow it's also our responsibility to tell the Filipino story to the rest of the world. Fashion design is part of the creative economy. So what we are trying to tell you today is that what you do matters very much to the big picture. The, the fashion world is really focusing on the Asian market and, and a lot of Filipinos are making these and we want to grow as an industry and not just We are just a dot. We are just one part of the ecosystem. But uh, if we can bring together, you know, various government agencies working towards a common goal, that's bringing the fashion industry in the global scene. We're actually looking at bringing this to an even greater market and encouraging young Filipinos to actually stake their claim out on the industry, spread the word throughout Asia. This could be the beginning of a new age for Philippine fashion. It's extremely heartwarming to see that this brainchild of young fashion creatives has brought about this new effort from SITEM. Congratulations to all the designers. Well, those were some exciting and awesome memories. It was definitely nice to see the whole fashion community gather to work towards the same goal of bringing our local talents to greater heights. Thank you also to PHX Fashion Conference co-founder Esme Palaganas and advisor Tricky Lopa. Kudos to you and the rest of the PHX Fashion Conference organization. And at this point, it is my distinct honor to welcome our esteemed panel of fashion consultants, who will also be the mentors to our group of young designers as they venture into the global fashion arena, starting with the Japanese market, of course. Without further ado, please welcome Teta Ortiz Matera, Jason Lee Coates, and Hirohito Suzuki. Hi, Lexi. Hi, this is Teta Ortiz Matera. I'm a former fashion model and lifestyle com columnist for the Philippine Star, and now a Tokyo-based advocate for Philippine fashion. I own Lead Fashion Consultancy, which primarily promotes Filipino fashion designers and brands here in Tokyo. So here we are, and I give you Jason. Hi, I'm Jason Lee Coates. I'm a fashion editor, stylist, and I'm the co-director of H3O Fashion Bureau in Tokyo and Australia with Hero. I've been living in Tokyo for um, more than 15 years and throughout Asia for kind of like 25, I think. I started H3O 14 years ago. Um, and we're a leading independent fashion distribution, sales, and press showroom. So over to Hiro. Uh, I'm Hirohito Suzuki. I am the co-owner of H3O, and we when since we started the business, I'm more having the Japanese face dealing Japanese uh, customers. So Jason is more of a designer and I'm with for the Japan double face to deal with the different so many countries and that's how we are very successful. Well, that's a very impressive portfolio that you have there, all three of you. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Our young designers will surely learn so much from the three of you. Now let's jump straight into the discussion by helping us understand Japan's fashion market, particularly Tokyo. How unique is the market and why is it so difficult for international brands to sort of penetrate the local scene? Because I think it's a common challenge even for big international brands. Maybe we can start with you, Jason. I mean, I know that we all know that this is a very, very big fashion market, but it's a very closed market. Um, everything is focused around um, the domestic needs, about um, what Japanese people want. And so it's very specific in that respect. Everything is also done in Japanese. All business is done in Japanese.
because every buying appointment is done in Japanese and everything is Japanese. So there are a lot of um, difficulties um, just even contemplating getting into this market. Um, that being said, trends begin here. Fashion is um, very unique. Um, we have a lot of local designers and there's a massive um, already established domestic market with incredible um, local brands. Um, we're still one of the biggest luxury fashion markets in the world, um, and that's really important. Our, um, our Japanese public are massive consumers of not only luxury brands, but also of fashion in general. And that means, therefore, that the competition here is vast. There is a lot of competition, not only coming from every single international brand, but also from the local brands. So that's something that we always have to take into consideration here. There's not only competition from overseas, there's fantastic competition from Japan. When we started uh, introducing many, sorry, when we start introducing many brands from other countries, and some designer from other Asian market, for example, Thailand or Taiwan or some other country designer said, is that okay? How Japanese people react to the made in Thailand or made in Indonesia or some, something like that? Also, I think Philippine designer think, is that okay? Japanese people it can buy Philippine design designers product. Actually, when we introduce the international brands, so buy. Buyers that don't care about which kind is suitable for Japanese market. I think uh, we have to teach all the designers what the buyer is looking for. And actually, Japanese people are really excited to find a new uh, talent um, from Philippine market. And I think that is how we can help to the designers involved in this project. Um, just to add to that, Lexi, sorry. I just want to emphasize also that I think that it's very important also to have the right partner that's Tokyo based. And I think we found the right partner with H3O to do this project. Because in Japan, it's also very important, um, networking, the connections, it's about the introductions. You can't just go you know, to a showroom, even if you think you have amazing products and knock on their door and say, can you please represent my brand? It doesn't happen that way. So, you know, uh, with the years that I've uh, been in the fashion industry here, I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, Jason and Hiro. And when I met them, I understood and I realized that they were the perfect partner for this project. So, you know, I cannot emphasize how important it is to have the right people in this project. Exactly. And I love that you're there to be the bridge for both for both cultures. I love it, Tata. Thank you so much for doing that. And judging from last year's conference, when you had a glimpse of the works of Filipino designers and talents, what do you think the Philippine fashion scene can offer to Japan? Because obviously, Jason, you did talk about it's super competitive. I mean, you're talking international brands. I mean, and with, with us, we have a lot of SMEs. We have a lot of these small, you know, but beautiful craftsmen and, and artisans. So what do you think we can offer? Is it that exotic, unique perspective? Yeah, 100% it's that. Um, there's always something, for me, um, working on all sides of fashion, for me, it's always important that there be a sense of individual individuality um, that's coming from a designer. So that can be something that's cultural, it could be something that is emotional or um, can do with your background or your own personal love. So um, what I was fascinated by last year when we came down to Manila and met all of the designers was the newness that we were seeing. Um, there were a lot of fresh ideas and there was an enthusiastic attitude um, from all of the young designers. So that for us was um, something that we thought was really encouraging and exciting because you can feel that. When you look at clothes, you can feel an energy. And when there's a good energy associated with it, I think that it's really positive. There's a sense of difference to what um, the designers are doing, um, which I think is important. 
um, they're not necessarily working to the same trends that are happening on the streets here or in Paris. They're kind of marching to their own drum, which I personally think is more important. I also was really impressed during the lockdown when, because personally I'm into Nintendo, and when I saw a lot of the um, young designers, particularly in Manila, reaching out to um, Nintendo fans on Animal Crossing and using that as a way of expressing their brands, doing studios and showrooms online, I just that just blew me away because that is not happening in other countries. That was coming from the Philippines. And that is something, that is the new era of marketing. So I believe that we can learn also so much from like these guys. There's a couple of other points um, and it gets to that craftiness. Um, I think that there seems to be an incredible tradition of textiles in the Philippines that hasn't reached here yet. And I'm interested that every single designer that we talked to was kind of, they drew on that. They talked about that. They had this sense of kind of working with local artisans. And I think as we get into an, this era or maybe get beyond this era of fast fashion, I think people will be charmed by that. So um, that the sense of ethnicity, of craftiness is something that's unique and special. I think that that is something where you guys maybe have, um, you know, edge. Yeah, an edge. Yeah. It's something new. So we're very excited about the energy and the vigor of the designers. If I can just also add to that, um, Lexi, because coming from the Philippine fashion industry, working with designer for decades, you know, I feel like there's a difference because the designers of before would design for their own sort of like, of course, for the clients, but for their own personal satisfaction, what they feel like is beautiful, what they think is will sell. And but the fashion industry, the global fashion industry has has changed. You know, you have to be in, in tune with the with the changes that, 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 that are happening right now. And I feel like the young designers, particularly the ones who are participating in this program, understand that. You know, so I feel like they have a modern perspective of Philippine design, but with a hint of tradition. And they all have their authentic stories that they express very well with their designs. You know, nowadays you cannot just design, churn out clothes and you know, think it's okay. They have to be able to represent something and must resonate with our market, which is highly rel uh, um, engaged in sustainable uh, sustainability, cultural uh, appreciation, really and, you know, relevant issues like that. You know, the, it's a very active and engaged market, and that's important for our young designers to, to understand, and I think they do, you know. So I believe they're ready to take on the next step outside of the Philippines, and, you know, first step for us would be Tokyo, Japan. Well, you know what? I saw Grayson and his eyes lit up when he was talking about the designers that he saw last year. And I feel that they've really ticked all of the boxes for you, Jason. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear it because if there's something that we don't lack in this country, it's definitely creativity, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, I guess to drive that point home that our local fashion scene is indeed flourishing, it's time that we introduce all the designers that will be participating in this program. So let's get to it. Hi Manila fame! Hi PHX Tokyo! My name is Pan. I am a textile designer. I specialize in illustrating stylized botanical and animal prints for fabric and wallpaper. I create wearable art pieces such as scarves, like the one I'm wearing and the one I was holding, and kimonos. I like working on pieces that can be styled or worn in many different ways. A lot of my garments are reversible, like my reversible kimonos. I like the idea of having like two outfits in one item. I feel really happy when my customers tell me things like they feel like they can wear the kimono from now until like when they're grandmothers. I try my best to make items that are both um, beautiful conversation pieces. And at the same time, they're really easy to wear. Like you don't have to think too hard about the outfit. You can just throw it on over a shirt and jeans and call it a day. Aside from designing for my own brand, I also enjoy working with other brands. 
So I do licensing and commissioned work. I worked with Adobe recently. I've licensed work to Ponces Tam Tam under fast retailing. I have a wallpaper collection with Technographica in Italy. I'm really excited to be in this PHX Tokyo program. I'm really looking forward to learning a lot from this and hopefully contributing something of value to this program and to the industry. Thanks so much for having me, Manila Fame and PHX Tokyo. Hi, my name is Jill and I'm the founder and creative director of Jill Lab, a contemporary women's wear label based in Manila, Philippines. Jill Lab is guided by its values of feminine dressing with ease, comfortable, practical, multi-use separates and dresses that stem from that relaxed feeling of wearing a house dress, yet elegantly elevated for work and play. The label explores the use of color, pattern, and texture. Current materials include seersucker and rotary angles. Jill Lau is for today's woman who seeks easy elegance in her daily life. Her personality is expressed through clothing, but never to the point that it overpowers or is the center of attention. The label is about feeling confident and comfortable in one's own skin. Its pieces are meant to last for more than one season and designed to be cherished for years to come. Hi, I'm Kelvin Morales, a contemporary fashion designer. My brand is focusing on manually hand embroidery and tailored pieces. I have fascination in using unusual materials like uh, hair salon swatches and industrial materials to develop new ideas and techniques for clothing. Also, we're starting to use local fabrics like piña and piña cocoon then innovate it. So usually, my source of inspiration comes from a various aspects of life that revolves around art and atypical stories. Then, my goal is not only to focus in clothing, also in art, home accessories, and collaboration with our young, talented artists. Hello, I'm Mia Philippe. I'm the creative director behind the Mia Philippe Design Studio. And what we create is ethereal elegance that is told through stories in your hands. These stories are interpreted through high fashion accessories such as minodiers, bridge jewelry, as well as fine jewelry. One of our key craftsmanship is through our brass work, which is hand carved and then casted. And then we combine it with, we combine it with shells, parchment, and wood and wood as well. We would want to say thank you to HD0 and Saitem for having us in this in this exciting project and we do hope to meet and to meet and see everyone in Tokyo soon. So thank you again for having us. So hey guys, we are the designers behind Hamu. So my name is Abraham Guardian. I'm Amal Oki. So basically Hamu is a brand that uh, we both started back in 2017. Uh, just before uh, we debuted our uh, brand through our graduation uh, fashion show. So uh, since then, we've been working on contemporary pieces, you know, from big, loud, avant-garde pieces that can you can almost say it's art pieces to uh, wearable RTW pieces that we like to call them as ready to wear. So, of course, I know you guys might be curious. So let's get the ball rolling. So, Mamu, what can you say about our style? Um, I think our style is very, you know, like what you said, contemporary because we're really inspired of, you know, everything that we see and especially contemporary art. And, and you can say that our style is kind of oversized and not really, you know, some are obnoxiously big and some are, you know, for the RTW basis, we do it oversized and not, bod and not body hugging, something like that. Um, yeah, and um, also one way for me to describe our style as a brand is that I would say um, we we are we are a brand that does uh, a cohesive kind of mess. So um, our pieces might look intimidating, it might look messy, but then if you look at it in an actual whole, you would realize that it's actually cohesive. Like it's not just random elements, you know. <laughs> plot together it's just, there's really a cohesiveness in the pieces that we are you know doing so um the materials that you know we use to do our pieces has a wide range so we range from like uh you know cotton to twill and we've recently even done uh pina as well so that's actually really interesting let me go wait 
up to unconventional materials like plastic it's not really for clothing well raincoats but you yeah. know we used it for some pieces we did in our you know our paris pieces yeah yeah and, and we also work on like materials such as foley decks it was fun actually pipes yeah we used pipes and ropes as well um you know we weave them to create inter- interesting textures you know and, and do like interesting fabric manipulations with them so uh as designers you know our personal belief is that uh, our clothing has no gender and it should always uh challenge the way people perceive it as and you know make them curious you know like why why is this piece like that or why is why is this piece worn by um someone else you know why is this piece worn by a guy when you know it doesn't really look masculine you know uh we like to challenge the norms we like to make people really like think hard about you know why is fashion uh, pivoting towards this particular way you know because i feel it's it's really 2020 so um lots of big changes are happening to the industry not just the fashion industry but you know everywhere else so yeah uh we're really excited to be able to uh showcase our uh pieces you know in tokyo and yeah stay tuned for more updates from us hi everyone i'm joseph and i'm the founder and creative director of bagasao it is ready to wear an accessories brand based in manila our brand centers around the emotional connection between the people and their pieces aiming to refashion a world that sees clothing as a second skin a vital component for a layered personality and the everyday our brand is driven by the desire to create well-designed impeccably crafted goods born out of an ethical production chain energy and excitement is injected by jolts of color tactile fabrics and subtle design details Remembering, remembering the PHX Fashion Conference in 2019, when we were able to get an in-depth um, view of the global market, and our brand was reviewed by the H2O Fashion Bureau, was truly an eye-opening experience for me. And it gave me a much clearer perspective on how to go where we want to go. And being able to be part of the PHX Tokyo program is truly an answered prayer. Thank you and please pray for all of us. Hello, my name is Jerome Lorico and I'm the creative director of the brand Lorico. Lorico is a conceptual and progressive brand based in Manila, Philippines. Our brand spirit is based mostly on urban and traditional ideas, both classic and modern. It is the intersection of the old and the new. We also use different elements, disciplines, such as art, fashion, and literature in order for us to create familiar messages, but in a different language. We are also guided by a different kind of manifesto that is based from schools of thoughts such as historicism, futurism, and modernism. This creed of ideas actually guide us in order for us to create products, concepts, messages that are both intellectually, emotionally, and physically present. In a world that is bombarded by different kinds of ideas saturated by so many things that teaches us on how to be a better consumer. One of the main ideas that our brand is trying to push is to help people, to help someone to feel more present, more aware, not just of himself, but of the space and the society around him. Hello everyone, I am Joyce Mukitalo and I head the J Mukitalo Jewelry brand. Um, for 11 years now, I've been working with third generation artisans from Bulacan, which is the jewelry capital of the Philippines. I started in 2008 after I joined the National Jewelry Design Competition and I haven't stopped working with them since. 
um, we mainly use uh, sterling silver and 18 karat gold in our work. So our jewelry is classified under fine. We use a lot of um, gemstones as well, mostly outsourced. But we use also a lot of uh, local organic materials such as pearls, which feature heavily in our work. Um, we keep our production as clean as possible um, and try to use uh, recycled gold whenever possible. This is part of our um, baby steps towards uh, being an ethical jewelry brand. Um, and when it comes to uh, design, I have a vast inspiration, but I have recurring themes um, which involve uh, arcanic symbolism and the natural world. I find that um, jewelry designing is similar to painting, which is really my one true love. I took up fine arts in university. Um, there are challenges in making art, and in this case, art jewelry. But I'm looking forward to working with Saitem and H30 to to um, tackle these challenges and to elevate our brand to a global scale. Um, and with that, I would like to thank everyone. I am very excited to be part of this project and good luck to us. Well, that was such an interesting, unique and diverse group of designers. I'm wondering how you guys at Saitam selected these designers. Did you have any particular criteria that you were looking for, apart from the things that Jason mentioned about uniqueness and all of this? Um, well, last year, as part of the PHX conference, we conducted a series of portfolio reviews, and um, we really went through, you know, details, fabric, all of those things, you know nitty-gritty like and we were very um upfront you know we told them like it was you know no sugar coating we were very um direct just to let them know what needed to be done you know uh with their collections um but of course we saw the potential so that was the most important um, part you know and then of course since then we followed up with them via email their instagram accounts um just to gauge their uh, readiness for the project and you know jason and hero they've been very kind to like answer all questions about how to improve their design and things like that so but of course also personally i knew most of uh, the participating designers uh, from the previous projects that i've been doing uh, for the past five years with um, Japan Fashion Week Tokyo, which is called Asian Fashion Meets Tokyo and uh, Bench Design Awards. So most of them participated in this in those projects. So they've actually been vetted rigorously already prior to this. And well, Jason, what do you think or how do you think the Japanese market will respond to these to these very a very unique group of designers that really have their own sort of perspective and their own eye and, and their own brand to offer? Yeah, well, obviously, when we were looking at everybody, we were also looking through the eyes of um, sellability. We weren't just um, you know having a fun day with a group of designers. We were looking for kind of business. Um, and that's what we do, and I know that that's what they want to do too. So um, we were looking at the um, quality that they were um, able to produce. We were looking at the sellability, like the pricing, the availability of um, production, and obviously, like we were looking at individuality too. Um, there's a lot being talked about diversity at the moment, and I think that we've got a really great diverse group of um, designers who are not cookie cutter. Um, I think another thing that's really, really interesting about this group is the fact that there is no real history of Japanese stores working with young Filipino designers. And that's something that we kind of absolutely love the idea of um, because in all of my years here, my experience shows me that buyers, fashion buyers want to have a story that they can tell their customers. They And the customers want a story that they can connect to. 
They want to be able to connect with that designer. They want to become a fan. There's so much fast fashion now that gives you zero story and zero emotion. And so if you want to spend a little bit of extra money on um, something that's a bit more personal, that's really something that um, is important. And I feel like that's our designers have that kind of new story to tell. And Hiro, what did you find that, that struck you about these particular designers? And what do you feel the Japanese market will, will think about them? I, I thought they have something, something very interesting and not seen in Japanese market. But that, there is still some way to improve for, for the market like a size and fabric and the pricing and also the design. There's a but, lot of work to yeah, do. Yeah, but they have some like a special individual thing, something very charming part to Philippines, but not too strong. But I, we saw really interesting brands. So the, we, we found like a great potential for those designers. There's the foundation. We just need to really improve on that. That's that's uh, bottom line. So, absolutely. But that's where your mentorship comes in, which is which is the excellent part right. about it. So, based yes. on what you've seen so far and from your own experience, especially you, Teta, what are the most or what are you most excited about for these designers to learn from this program? Because Hiro already mentioned some of the kinks that need to be ironed out. But what yeah. what can they take away from this wonderful program? Well, just the fact that we're doing a mentorship program is already something in itself because, you know, uh, with my years of experience, that was, I think, what was lacking for our um, Filipino designers. I mean, as you mentioned earlier, there's so much creativity, you know, among the Filipino designers, but being able to sell, you know, in the proper way is very crucial because it's not just about creation it's about business you have to be able to make money from from your designs right and um japan is a very specific market you know um brands or like products that sell in europe or in the us like um, don't necessarily um succeed in japan so the mentoring program that we've prepared is japan centric you know, we, it's like from point A to point Z, there's no skipping any letters. We really will make sure that every aspect of the design process, you know, will be addressed in order for them to really come up with a great collection. So it's going to be very comprehensive. It will also be, um, how do you call it? I mean, stringent for the designers. There will be deadlines, you know. So, um, yeah, it's it's almost like going on an online um uh, a course, you know, for a fashion school, but this is even better because it's all one-on-one, -on -one, it's very specific, you know, and there's so much relationship between the uh, young designers and us here in Tokyo because we really want to make sure that nothing gets lost in translation and that everything that needs to be addressed be addressed in order for us to have a successful program and for them to be able to sell in Japan. Can I add something? Absolutely. My uh, The part that I'm interested in is the evolution. What I want to see is those guys that we met kind of one year ago, and I want to see the evolution of their brands. I want to see, like, a new lightness coming in. I want to be able to introduce them to perhaps Japanese fabrics or something like that in order for them to take their craft onto the next level. I want to um, express, have them express themselves in the best way possible with a new lightness, with an ease and kind of a finesse. I think that that's what um, I'm hoping to bring to the table and I'm very, very excited to um, see from our group. Yeah, because it, it just sounds so exciting and I'm sure that you're going to be giving us snippets in the coming months of how the mentorship is progressing. Maybe you can talk us through, you know, a few things like maybe what would a, a typical day like be for, for these students and um, maybe so that students who possibly want to join eventually what what they can look forward to as well. Uh, well, for now.
Now we've actually developed a mentoring program where we will be like beginning this month uh, until uh, June. Um, so it's going to be one group session monthly. And then there will be one-on-one -on -one sessions right after the group sessions. And we will divide uh, the, the individual sessions into two afternoons. So then we get really um, a, enough time with each designer to talk about, uh, you know, the the topic for the for the mentoring program on that particular month you know depth and it will really be i don't want to say personal but it you know there's that relationship so um yeah so it's going to be from uh, I think it's personal. june okay there you go i think so, we will have a personal relationship with them i think that you know i'll be getting whatsapps from everybody at all kind of times <laughs> of the that's night, true <laughs> and i'm cool with that you know like i kind of encourage that i think that the creative um the possibilities can only come from that. I think that we have to understand that each designer is a unique, um, has a unique vision, and that's something that we need to expose and kind of foster. And um, that's gonna be the most exciting part because what we're doing is creating careers. We're creating kind of personalities. We're letting kind of the real talent show. So, There'll be a lot of opportunity and a lot of um, things that we can share. Well, I hope I, people I, are inspired. Exactly. I, I love how all three of you seem to have different roles and different personalities. We could already see it today. Hiro is direct <laughs> to the point. <laughs> you know, Jason is the one with the heart. And I think that is going to be. Call me. Call me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> and I bought out the two of them. <laughs> yes, you, you're going to be the one with the whip that I think, you know, to, yes. to make sure uh, yes. that everything is all systems go. And with that, Absolutely. I'd like to thank you, you three, Teta Ortiz Matera, Jason Lee Coates, and Hiro Suzuki for the mentorship for these wonderful designers. Thank you so much. And we're all looking forward to seeing these young designers conquer the fashion world in Japan and, and eventually the world over and to make the Philippines super, super proud. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank, thank you, you as well. And at this point, to close our program, I would like to invite Edie Pauline Swakohan for a few parting words. Thank you, Lexi. You know, uh, I used to be part of the fashion industry for, what, 15, 16 years. Um, and it's really heartwarming for me to see a program like this because I've always believed in the capacity of the Filipino designer. Um, and even my days at the magazine, um, I always used to stress that what we really needed was a good mentorship program and a good, uh, that would teach our designers the business smarts that they needed in order to succeed in the export market. So I am very proud to be able to pioneer such a program together with H3O and with Teta. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on this program. Um, at this point, I'd like to thank also Yusek uh, Gani Makatoman for gracing us with his presence this afternoon. The PHX Fashion Conference community led by Esme Palaganas and Tricky Lopa. Our esteemed consultants, Teta and H3O. And our young and talented driven designers, Seth Bagasau, Fian, Jill Lau, uh, Hamu, Kelvin Morales, Jerome Lorico, Joyce Makitalo, and Neil Philippe. Um, you guys are awesome. Make us proud. And to everyone who took the time from their busy schedules to join us in the launch of PHX Tokyo, thank you so much. We at SITEM and the whole Philippine fashion community are so excited to see you thrive and succeed in the global stage. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much, Edie Pauline, and you, you did great work today. It's been a long day, but a, a very fruitful day for the whole team at Fame and Fame Plus. That concludes our program launch for PHX Tokyo 2020-2021. This has been your host, Lexi Schultz. Have a great afternoon, everybody. <laughs>